The latest decision intelligence platform enables business users and analytic teams to quickly understand the reasons and key drivers for business behaviors and get instant answers using natural language. Telius automates complex data analysis to uncover root causes, understand key business drivers, compare cohorts, and identify meaningful segments in your data. It instantly surfaces insights hidden across your data silos, extracts important findings by analyzing billions of data points from multiple sources in seconds, and in this way it puts advanced analytics into the hands of more people, bringing together the power of domain expertise and data science insights. Using Telius, we'll be analyzing flood data using Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development forecasts, and Federal Emergency Management Agency FEMA data and insurance flood policy data sets. Once the data is prepared, it could be scheduled to refresh based on user frequency, and then it could be made available as a business view where multiple data sets could be added to prepare a, a data model. And then this data model could be utilized throughout the platform for data exploration and derive insights and to perform machine learning modeling. As the data gets refreshed, for example, in our reporting layer, this data would be visualized in a more up-to-date manner where user can understand the data and derive insights right from a reporting layer and make use of the data. Using Telius, data was ingested as a CSV file, and then preparation of data was done in the prepare layer where automated pipelines could be set up to process the data in the way the user wants it. There are multiple ways in which processing could be done. User could use a point and click interface to do transformations on data. And if there are some heavy programmatic ways of doing transformations, then user could use either Python or SQL-based transformations to perform data transformation and analysis. For this exercise, we have used a combination of point-and-click interfaces and Python transformations to transform the data. Let's look at the data that we have ingested. To look at the disasters and how they impacted the resident population, we can type a query to search for affected population by disaster type. Notice that I have made a spelling mistake in terms of typing the disaster type, but the platform compensates for that. It picks up the right column from the dataset to pick up the information from, analyzed all of this information in a fraction of a second, and picks up the best fit chart for us to show the information on. Now, these charts could be switched to other formats to show the information in another form. These charts are drillable. So for example, right now we see that most of the affected population is due to floods. And the next disaster that has affected the population is drought followed by storms. Now within floods, if we want to understand which regions were mostly impacted, then we can drill down to that category and understand that most of the floods were occurring in Eastern Asia. Now this chart could be downloaded as a PowerPoint or a CSV file. Now, as it's downloaded as a PowerPoint, it gets downloaded in native PowerPoint format. So chart designs could be switched to match user preference and then used in internal presentations if need be. Now, if you want to understand which type of flooding is impacting the population the most, then we can look at coastal area exposure and river area exposure from a trend standpoint. And what we notice here is that most of the area exposed had a dramatic increase through river flooding. So right around Jan 2015, we see that a lot of uh, area was impacted by river flooding versus coastal flooding. And this could be allocated to a lot of uh, maybe increased rainfall and maybe human erosion activities that caused the rivers to flood right around 2015 timeframe. Similarly, we can look at the population density across different states in the United States of America. And what we see here is that uh, multiple millions of rows of data was analyzed in a fraction of a second, and the best fit chart is returned. And it seems like Northeast region is the one that has a uh, higher population density than the Southeast region. So, uh, but still there's a lot of impact of storm activity and flood activity on the Southeast region uh, that was impacting uh, the population living there. Now, as 
disasters like floods and storms happen, there's a lot of loss of life and property. And one of the ways to understand the impact of these floods on life is by looking at claims data. So we can ask the platform to show us amount paid on claims. And let's look at the recent data. So just for the last three years, and let's look at it from a geographic standpoint. So what we are looking at in here is the amount paid on claims in the United States for the last three years. And what we can see here is that most of the impact has occurred in the Southeast region of the US, in Louisiana, Texas, South Carolina, where there's a lot of storm and flood activities happening mostly every year. And we can always switch charts to understand this from a different charting standpoint. So you're looking at it from a bar graph. And here we can see that Oklahoma is the one that is mostly impacted for the last three years. And these charts are drillable, so you can drill down and understand the impact from a city standpoint. So we have drilled down in the state of Oklahoma and looking at all the cities in the Oklahoma that were impacted by floods. And it seems like Ada was the most impacted city in the state of Oklahoma, which was the most impacted in the United States. Now let's look at the affected population by floods. So for that, we can type a query in natural language, asking the platform to show affected population for floods on a monthly basis. And what we see here is that a lot of population was affected, let's say from 1990 to 1991. And overall, there's an increase of affected population from year to year by floods. But there's a stark increase, stark jump in the affected population from 1990 January to 1991 January. So this is worth investigating. To understand that, we can quickly run an insight around that. It sits in the insight layer. And in here, we can uh, look at it as a report. So what we're looking at here is that from January 1990 to January 1991, there were about 181 people impacted by floods. There was an increase of about 181 million people being in fact impacted by floods from 1990 to 1991. That's about a 388% increase of people being impacted. Now the top change contributors are given in plain English in here. Uh, so the reasons behind that impact is due to slides, so land, mud, snow, or rock slides that have originated due to this increased flooding, mostly in the regions of Hualeli and Yangtze, and that's mostly due to heavy rain. So as we go down to understand more of the reasons, the calculation that went behind in calculating that impact is shown in here. The amount of data points that are chosen are also shown in here. Now. The number one contributor here is land, mud, snow, or rock slides. And within that, you can see that the disaster subside, subtype is riverine floods that were originated due to heavy rain, mostly in the Eastern Asia region that belongs in the Asia continent. There are other change reason contributors that are given in here, both positive and negative. And this helps in understanding the reasons behind why uh, there was a stark increase in the total affected population from the year 1990 to 1991 due to floods. And what we just saw is the usage of a trend driver to understand the total affected population by floods between two time periods. So looking at trends, what we have with Intelius is uh, some other ways of also looking at insights to do some root cause analysis. So we already looked at trend drivers. We also have comparison drivers where we could compare two cohorts of population to understand what's different between these two, what's driving one over the other. The other type of insights we have is key driver analysis, where we're looking at segmentation. Uh, for example, if you want to look at the top reasons for deaths in the top 20% of the population, uh, for one of the most recent years, like 2021, then uh, uh, and a key driver analysis or a segmentation uh, analysis could be done. So what we see on the left is the top reasons for uh, the deaths of the top 20% of that population. So we see that the number injured, a specific disaster type, uh, and of course, the number of people affected, uh, the type of disaster, a specific region, all of these are top reasons for uh, increasing the total deaths. Now, there's a specific profile 
that could be derived out of these top reasons. For example, uh, if the profile matches, uh, there's more than 15 people being injured, uh, and if the disaster type is north of earthquake, convective storm, or climatological nature, and if the region in which that is occurring is northwestern Africa, then there's 4.6 times more of a chance of uh, a lot of deaths being happening, especially uh, an increase in, in that's being happening due to this type of a profile. Now the different assets, the different uh, functionalities of the platform that we went through are all shareable and uh, collaboratable within the enterprise. For example, uh, considering the dispatch, the reporting data that we have, uh, these are shareable within uh, you know a specific user group or with a specific individual. Uh, these could also be uh, shared uh, just by sending a specific URL uh, the user doesn't need to have access to the entire platform, but uh, they could just access the specific risk pad if need be using this embedded URL technology. Apart from that, the insights that we went through uh, are also shareable in a similar manner. Now, apart from that, uh, we could utilize the predictive capabilities of the Relius platform to train a machine learning model and uh, to use any of these models to perform a lot of machine learning tasks. For example, in predicting the number of deaths using a regression machine learning model, in classifying less impactful, more, more impactful events using a binary classification model or even a multi-class classification model to forecast the number of deaths using time series regression to perform some clustering analysis on uh, different regions where these disasters may occur. We could run the machine learning in a point and click manner where we select the type of analysis you want to run using a specific machine learning model, or we could use automation, automated technology using our ML to directly let Telius uh, choose the type of model for you and run, run a lot of models on the same type of data, pick the best model for you. Now, the cool innovation that we have as part of the platform is in the prepare layer, where uh, we have a metadata layer in which uh, users could look at the entire list of columns that are existing in the data set and uh, assign specific display names to them. They could also change the data types all at once, and uh, the specific column types, uh, dimension or measure, a specific feature type, if it's categorical or continuous, uh, the basic um, aggregation layer, the default aggregation that uh, you want the platform to perform when it's showing you searches. And apart from that, the uh, semantic layer could be defined at this point. So if a user wants to call a time period as time or date range, information like that could be added uh, to create a semantic layer in here. Apart from that, uh, if some of these columns are not business oriented, you do not want them to be included in the type of insights that are generated, you could uh, toggle them on or off from here. In the same way, if some of these columns do not, uh, if you don't want them to be included in the predictive layer to create machine learning models, you could create your uh, feature list in here uh, so that your machine learning models only pick the columns that are more appropriate to be included in the model of uh, the way the user wishes them to be. And you could also include a quick description of the column names in here, uh, a quick uh, one-liner so that the users understand what the column name stands for. And whenever they hover their pointer on in the wispads, uh, or anywhere else on this particular, particular, particular column name, they could see the description quickly and understand what that column stands for. So all in all, in the flood analysis that was done uh, for uh, the Gartner showdown, we have analyzed uh, global disasters across the past 30 years and understood the impact of floods versus other natural disasters. And the insights uh, that we derived uh, were uh, beyond floods and earthquakes have proven comparably devastating for human life loss. We analyzed the river and coastal data for US states and found that uh, river flooding area had a drastic increase in 2015 versus coastal flooding. And when we went granular in understanding the, uh, the impact of floods uh, using uh, flood insurance claims, we uh, found that the uh, most impact occurred in Oklahoma in the last three years, especially in the Ida city. We also found that from the year 1990 to 1991, there was a lot of land and mudslides in the Eastern Asia region that led to a 388% increase in total affected population due to floods that was caused by heavy rains.